We become what we think about. Focus on what you want rather than focusing on what you don't want. Or who do you want to be? You know, why, why, did, why are you here on this planet? You live according to the principles of, of love, compassion, you know, uh, appreciative joy, uh, you know, celebrating other people's um, successes, but how do you overcome hatred and, and confusion and just having a good heart? Then I think you, that's what happened to me. Then I start to get clear about what, what I like to do and how I could be of service. How can I help other people? That we were wired for success, but it's how we relate to our experience that determines whether we're, we're chipping away or we're, you know, kind of burying that sense of, of wholeness that, we, that we're born with. It's just that we, we, we forget it. We don't look inside, we're looking outside. And so unless we're still and we think about it and we understand that I was born with this masterpiece and no one can give it to me or take it away, it's, it's an inside job. And so if I look at what's right, it's, it makes, makes a lot of sense. So it's whether you're coming from a place of scarcity or I would say survival mode or coming from growth mode, which has to do with yes, I can, yes to life. And I, I have the capacity and the responsibility to make it different or to make it, make it better. Having that faith, that vulnerability to just see things that are hard to see. You gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. So can you handle the truth? It's a question, and if you can't, then you, if you see that, then you can say, well, is, if I'm gonna change, I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with that discomfort until the point that I can see what I need to see, then I can change it. So it's the persistence of continuing to do something until you can do it is, is, is most of the work. It's, it's just continuing to make mistakes, learn from mistakes, but the mistakes are viewed as feedback, not as I'm a failure, it's, it's just an event not who we are. So that error correction is really important. And when you can see, when you attribute it to something you can learn or change, now you've got faith and confidence to do it versus if you're seeing it like, oh, I'm just not strong enough, I'm not tall enough and all of that. That's just, that's what I call the negative community telling you you can't do anything rather than saying, well, let me see what, can I, what I can do. So it's like a child learning how to walk, right? Same thing. Your life can change. Your life can be more than just a place. It can be your future, your success. This change, this change takes courage. It takes courage to stand up and break down the aspects of your life that you know is holding you back. Let your progress be idolized. Let it speak for itself. Average becomes sort of like this slow asphyxiation. It's almost like an anesthetic. And that over time, we become kind of immune and dulled to the average that we're becoming. I know this is true, at least for me. You probably experience it yourself too. And so over time, we sort of minimize where we're at. In other words, I'm a little pudgy instead of being, no, you're a fat ass, right? You, know, you don't magnify the degree to which the pain ought to be affecting you. And so really what he means in that is, listen, you're gonna get out of your life what you'll accept. That's really difficult for people, I think, to understand is, look, what you think you're worth and what you're gonna tolerate is absolutely what you're gonna bring into your life and what the outward part of your life's gonna look like. And so I live by that. Like, I let myself sort of feel the pain and the difficulty of, of being not where I wanna be in whatever that area is, whether it's my spirituality, my relationships, my money. I let myself feel that pain because, as you know, there's two motivators, right? There's the gaining of pleasure, right? Wanting to go get something, chasing the dream, but then there's the avoidance of pain. And for a lot of champions, that's a pretty big driving force for them. And so at least for me, I, I leverage both of those things on me to get myself to take action. One of the reasons I'm relatively fit is not just peak state. I have an uncle in my family that died at 50 years old of a heart attack. He's my godfather, my dad's only brother. I kind of resembled him and I look like him. So on the way back from his funeral, my reticular activator is on heart attacks. On the TV screen on the airplane, I'm listening to music, is the Oprah Winfrey show. She's going through a new heart scan. I unplugged my headphones, plug into the airplane one. I scheduled it. I went in. I had a world-class doctor who understood reasons and leverage instead of just prescribing. Because when we coach people, you need to do this, you need to do this. The doctors do it. Take this pill, take this. He understood leverage and reasons. 
what you do is you take the scan, then you go to lunch, you come back. I took the scan, I went to lunch, I had a burrito. I came back and I'm in the, when I walk in, I sit down, the doctor comes up and he says, oh my, I can't believe these arteries are in that young body. Got my attention. We walk back in, we sit down. He could still go, you need Crestor, eat clean, get out of here. Isn't that what an average doctor does, right? No, wired me with huge reasons. He goes, let me ask you a question. Uh, I heard your wife's pregnant. Do you have, I said, yeah, I have a son. And he says, do you want to be there when he graduates from high school to be there for that day? I said, yes, sir, yeah. He goes, your wife's pregnant. What do you have? And I said, a daughter. This is where you get a dad. He goes, and she was six months pregnant. He goes, do you, um, would you like to walk her down the aisle on her wedding day? Or are you okay that it's some other man? I went, what the fuck is on this scan, right? Like, and he goes, I want to be very clear with you. If you keep going down the road you're going, there'll be some other man with your son at graduation high school and a stranger's walking your daughter down the aisle. It's not even born yet on her wedding day. And I went, boom. And he goes, but if you do exactly what I tell you to do, you'll be there. And so to this day, brother, there are mornings when I wake up, not every morning, I don't want to go to the gym. I go, Bella's wedding, Bella's wedding, Bella's wedding. So my standards are high because of my big old reasons. Other dudes may miss the gym that day because they're not going to miss their daughter's wedding if they don't go, but I've convinced myself I will. I get emotional. I've convinced myself I'll miss my daughter's wedding. So I will get my ass out of bed at four o'clock in the morning and I will get to that gym because my reasons are bigger so my standards are higher. So that's what I think causes us to have great standards is huge reasons. When you're inspired by something or someone in your life, you feel the magic. Now's the time to be the magic. What are you going to do? Are you going to let the masters inspire you to feel it? Or are you going to strive to be a master? It's your choice. The magic is waiting. Not only for you just to feel it, but to be it. Nobody can take this away. In your life, you can't escape anything that goes on with life. You know, we all are not immune to problems, or you know, drama, or trauma, or tragedy. You know, we all are uh, here as human beings. So, you know, when you're going through some sort of difficulties, you know, first find out whatever that difficulty may be. You know, you know we do with within your power in terms of how to start slowly you know, get yourself out of that situation. And you believe, you be optimistic about it. You know, being negative about a situation, staying in that place, it never helps. You know, it's nothing wrong with understanding that place, feeling bad about it, looking at it for what it is, but don't stay there. You gotta get back on that other side and start looking at the resolve, the resolution of it, or how can I get back to feeling good and feeling prosperous again to where I'm not dealing with this obstacle. Words are very powerful, very powerful. So the thing is about getting within yourself and understanding who you are to kind of, you know, ward off those negative comments that's coming toward you. Adversity always prepare you. You know, you have to go through those things in order to, to see the light, of the, the, end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I don't think anything is gonna just be like this throughout your life. You know, you have to go through that difficult, overcome obstacle. You know, because it's, it's a testament of your character, of who you are and how you're able to deal with certain things in order to get yourself back on that playing field. Everything happened for a reason. No regrets. All the negative things that happened, I'm thankful for it because I learned, hopefully I learned from those situations. And all the positive things, I'm humbly Grateful that those were able to take place and still striving to be the best I can be. And, you know, going forward, hopefully I can encourage some kids to be the best they can be. You know, anything is possible. Um, positive thinking is also translates to them. You know, so, um, you know, when you have something that's positive out there, you can be, you know, the best you can be. You know, when you're negative out there, I mean, you could bring down the worst person. Misery loves company. 
you know, Misery Loves Company. So we, we're not Debbie Downers, we're more uplifters. You know, we always, no matter what the situation, what the situation is, we're gonna try to look for the outcome, the better of that situation, you know. If we can't find a resolution to get out of it, you know, we're gonna keep on searching to continue to try to find a resolution to get out of it because that's what you do. You know, that's how you get to the bottom of it. That's how you get to the facts and the answers. Are you willing to fight? Are you willing to grab? Are you willing to be the warrior? Bring your shield, bring your sword. Stand up and fight. Today will be the day where you can take control. Take control of your power. Become this power. Because now is the time to fight. You're a warrior. Warriors don't give up and they don't back down. Become the warrior. Transform your life. Transform yourself. Head out into battle. Step onto the battlefield. Use your weapons to fight through this pain. Fight through the rejection. Learn from the bruises, the blood, scars, because this time you can rise to become the victor. Step onto the playing field because now is the time to change. Now is the time to rise with the crown on your head. You know, you want to be a little bit better in some way tomorrow than you are today. But it's not going to be in a linear path. Again, these go through cycles of stress and recovery. So it's just kind of being able to surf the flow of that and know, again, it it's really comes down to balance. So it's the practices. Like you need to know what to do, for sure. And then you need to know how to apply those things in the right way. So when, you, when to push and when to take the, the pressure off the gas as well. And I think that's really understanding that. So part of it is the knowledge, and then part of it is the follow through, and then part of it is the discipline to know not only when you need to go, but when you need to rest. I think it's important to really trust that what you're doing is going to work. What's a day that makes life awesome and, and makes you, again, a little bit better tomorrow from having done it today? You have to really do the work. Like, you have to back it with hard work, you know? And if you ask Conor McGregor, like, what's the secret to his success? Hard work, hard work, hard work. I don't know if he actually worked harder than anybody, but he believes he does. You know, he has no doubts in his mind that he's actually working harder. And, and that's, I think, important. So really making sure that you really do your best to get the goods, you know, and to, and to practice that and to go out there and put yourself out there. And then on the other side, what is the thing, what is the antagonist of belief? Well, the antagonist of belief is fear. You know, fear is a belief that something negative is going to happen rather than something positive is going to happen. So it's like, that's on the other side. You're almost believing in your failure, right? Rather than believing in your success. So you have to go attack and collapse these different fears. And part of that is gonna be sucking out the, the penalty if, if you fail, right? Because like a lot of the fear comes because we're afraid that we're gonna judge ourselves harshly or whatever. So you gotta realize like there is no such thing as failure, there's just learning, right? So you collapse the penalty for failure. So that collapses the fear, which allows you to believe even more. So that's one way to do it. And the other way is to just look at fear itself and play out the different scenarios, know that you're gonna be fine. Again, forgive yourself always and, and really also just attack fear wherever you see it, even when it's trivial, even when it's some kind of, we were just, before, the, before we got on here, we talked about the fear of the number 13, trigotricophobia. Like if you're afraid of 13, you know what you need to do? You need to put 13s all over your fucking house. You know, you need to like sit in 13s, you need to go to the 13th, demand to be on the 13th floor of every hotel and every airplane, because you got to get over that shit, because that is telling yourself that there's something irrational that should control you. And if you believe there's something that's irrational that should control you, that will apply universally. So wherever you find fear specifically, that's out of balance with actual danger. Like I'm not saying touch a hot stove or put your hand in a rattlesnake cage. Like there's danger there, that's not fear. But 13, no danger, you know, that's not real. So go collapse that, the fear of crickets like I have or fear of like whatever it is, collapse fear wherever you see it. And that specific collapse will help with the universal collapse of fear in general. You just gotta understand, the only thing that you're responsible for is your best. Like you can't do better than your best. You just do your best. And if you try to obsess too much, you're not doing your best, you're gonna be paralyzed, right? So 
you have to get as much information as you can, make the most educated choice, make sure that you're not choosing based on ego or emotion or you know, greed or these other forces that delude you and prevent you from thinking clearly. But if you do your best and you fail, like, what are you gonna do, beat yourself up for that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. If you're doing your best, if you're really laying it out there, there's nothing, nothing more you can do. And, and that's, I think, the, that's really the key, is just to constantly rest and rely on that fact that I'm just, I'm doing my best, and there's nothing, nothing more than that. You know, you have to really appreciate where you are in the journey, and say, yeah, where you are is awesome but you could be better because that's the, the process is becoming better, right? So it's not, it's not judging it externally by any other criteria because every step is good, but the process of striving for more, the process to really unveiling who you are to an even greater degree, to getting cleaner and clearer and more full and more robust and the best version of yourself, like that process is a beautiful process. I think it's one of the reasons why we're here. It feels the best. It feels the best to be continuing on the path. But that doesn't mean that you look forward to a point in the path, say, when I get there, I'll love myself. When I get there, I'll have made it. Like, love yourself where you are, wherever you are. That's awesome. But still strive for more because the striving is the journey. It's always the striving. If we were able to do like even a fraction of the things we know we should, we would all be badasses, you know? But there's so many things you talk to people, yeah, I should be doing that. Yeah, I should be doing, I know I should be, I should be meditating. Yeah, I know I should be doing this. I should be eating better. I should be doing this. We all know what we want to do to be the best version of ourselves. but for whatever reason, we don't do it, you know? And there's a lot of reasons why, but we're not doing it. And so the ability to choose and actually decide what you're gonna do to be the Nagwal, to be the art and say, oh, well, if I believe I should meditate, then I'll meditate. And just collapsing that I know I should with actually doing it, you know, that is a superpower. That's what defines the greatest performers from the people who haven't quite made it yet. It's really their ability to say, oh, if I should train now, I will. Oh, if I should eat like this, I will. Oh, if I should do this, okay, then I will. It's collapsing that Knowing what, knowing what you should do and actually doing it and making that one. And that's ultimately a choice. We have way more power than we recognize and what people will tell us that we have. So stepping into that power and deciding for ourselves what we want to do with it. What time is it right now? Look at it, face it, stand up to it. What do you see? What did that number say to you? How much of this number have you wasted? Wasted on waiting. Waiting for what? What is it that you're waiting for? How much do you want it? Ask yourself this, what's more valuable? Waiting or your time, your power, and your action? This is where your journey starts. This is where you grow, grow, adapt, improve to become the person you admire. This is you, this can be you. Stop failing to respond, to react. This is how you shape your life, how you construct your future. Make this what it is, your success. All this work now are the steps before you break the ribbon at the finish line. This is your opportunity to change. Change towards a better life, towards a life where you are the director, where you are the power, the power that drives you forward to success, the power that defines your life now, that defines your legacy, your future. This is the time to become something more than ordinary, something outside the realm of expected, because you're more than it. you always have been. But in order for you to become this, you need to work. You need to want it so much it pushes you, pushes you outside your comfort zone. This is where it starts. This is where you become something, something better than now, where you build a life for yourself, one where you hold the reins, where you make the final cut, where you have that power. You deserve this. You deserve to feel fulfilled. Proud and excited for this newfound success you will and can embody. Your future, your legacy, your life can transform into the paradise you've always imagined it could be. 
Your life can change. Your life can be more than just a place. It can be your future, your success. This change, this change takes courage. It takes courage to stand up and break down the aspects of your life that you know is holding you back. Let your progress be idolized. Let it speak for itself. Let it leave a mark so deep it can never be erased. This dent can have such a positive influence on your life that it can transform your future, transform your life using the potential you know you've always had. Make your life worth remembering. Make it worth the pain it took, the hours it used, the effort put in. Know to take pride in your work. Know that your life can break all possibilities, break all boundaries, and become something beyond any expectations. You've been let down, you've faced rejection, and you've failed. Fortunately, when you hit that point, the only place to go is up. I want you to imagine that your life is a tree. The failure that you've just faced is actually a seed, and it's a seed that's gonna grow your potential. The light you need is your mindset and the water is your strength. Because the rejection you feel right now is sprouting your success. And in order for you to grow, you need to feel the pain. The pain of the struggle is more than just some dark place you go to, it's actually a starting place. A place to begin trying and a place that you start to improve. And that improvement can be the start of the making of your success. Look at me, you're not five feet under. You're five feet higher than any position you've ever been in. Man, stop bringing yourself down. Start learning that you are more than just your mistakes. In fact, they make you, they make you grow, and they make you branch out into a stronger and more courageous person. Give yourself the space to grow. Give yourself the space to grow into a better and a more successful person. Cause see, your potential is sprouting. You got a better foundation now because those roots are dug deep into the ground. And if something breaks you down, know that you can grow further past the point you were at before. Because this tree can only grow taller, bigger, and stronger. Because you are stronger now. So you got to know that this isn't a setback. This is just another ingredient that you need for the success that's coming your way. It really is stop making excuses, take control of your situation, and rise to your potential. Man, I don't think that we would be here if we didn't have a purpose. I, I can tell you that. No, it's our job to develop that purpose. It's our job to find and hone in and craft that purpose. And the purpose is usually crafted through some level of suffering. It's the hero's journey, right? Like in, in, in film. You know, the, the hero, he's down and out and, and, and he loses the girl in the, in the house. And he goes on this journey and he finds strength and wisdom and knowledge and comes back and is now the hero. We have to go through that level of suffering. There's this hunger that everyone has. And it's always neutered by family, by teachers, by culture. And I believe you wouldn't be put on this planet if you didn't have this hunger. And if you explore this hunger, and for me it was then being a fat kid, then being, being a foreigner, and then a fat kid, and then fixing my problems, and then realizing I have the solution to other people's weight loss problems. For someone else, it might be a financial thing. You know, they fix their financial problems, and they realize they can help everyone else's financial problems. But you have to go through the suffering. Um, you have to be hungry enough to deal with the pain and come out the other side with some scars, because scar tissue is infinitely more resilient than regular tissue. But again, it goes back to most people feel like, yeah, I think there's something great in me, but I don't want to explore it. I want to play it safe. I'm going to stay bubble wrapped. I don't want to risk it. But we wouldn't be put on this planet if we didn't have this greater thing to accomplish. Now, some of us are going to be Elon Musk and we're going to shoot a Tesla to the Mars, right? And, and that's okay. And others are going to create a fitness franchise or a, or a supplement company that actually delivers you know, great nutrients that help people optimize their performance. Whatever your purpose is, you've got to develop it. You've got to develop it. But you wouldn't be put on this planet if you didn't have it. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Not enough people are willing to build that mental, emotional toughness. And the moment they do, they'll, they'll persevere. Nothing happens until you get done. 
everyone's got a great idea, it'll make me this many millions, and it'll help this many people. Nothing happens until you get that sh done. Put yourself in a position where you're gonna thrive, not where it's gonna be comfortable, right? Get sh done. I believe we all are raised as fighter jets. Just we get neutered by parents, by grandparents, because of the filters they had and viewed life through, the experiences they had, teachers who go, you don't want to disappoint yourself. Just go to college, go get a good job. Go to college, don't go to college. Today, don't go to college. It's the worst thing you can do, unless you're gonna be a doctor or an attorney or an accountant or you know, some kind of an architect. Don't go to college. You can do a lot more in life without going to college. And so again, teachers, professors will end up neutering us. And when they take, they take that fighter jet, that hunger, the claws and fangs, they defang us. All right, so now we're crop dusters. Well, I don't want to take too many risks. I just want to live a good life and they want to be average and mediocre. That's the crop duster. Yet everyone inside has this hunger. See, the fighter jet didn't go away. It's just been suppressed. You've been neutered. And that was me. Like, hey, don't take big risks. Just go get a good job. Go be a smog technician. Like, that was the advice I was given. Go be a smog technician. Society, parents, whoever have set the standard for you to not play it safe, take risks. What if you lose? What if you lose? Who cares? As long as you don't die, you can come right back. And so the fighter jet mentality is that someone who is just determined, relentlessly obsessed in achieving an outcome in the face of all adversity. The crop duster is someone who's always looking for the easiest path, the loophole, which what I, I used to be a severe crop duster. The crop duster hits the snooze button every day because they'd rather take 10 more minutes of mediocre sleep than getting up and dominating their path. Every morning on my nightstand, there's two stacks of dominoes lined up. And at the top of this stack says, you're a loser. The top of this one says you're a winner. If I hit the snooze button, I've hit that first domino in the loser stack. The rest of my day is gonna suck. Now with that mentality, am I gonna ever hit snooze again? Absolutely not. Because I've sold myself on the idea that when I hit the snooze button, I'm an absolute loser. I'm scum of the earth. I'm, my day is destined to be shitty. Now some people go, you're being awfully hard on yourself. More people should be hard on themselves. We go around bubble wrapping ourselves, right? We, we leave the training wheels on for too long. Like, be hard on yourself. Take the bubble wrap off. Take the, take the training wheels off. No one did that for me, man. Be a fighter jet. Be a fighter jet. Go to battle every day. Take risks. That's what a fighter jet does. A crop duster has a routine life, and it's boring. Every day is a new opportunity to change your life. Every day is a new opportunity to make your life a better place to live in. Your life is at stake. Think right now what you've done differently from the things you did yesterday. Perhaps you got up an hour earlier. Maybe you meditated or you went to the gym. If you know that you haven't made any change today, then make this your day. Take this opportunity. Change. You're better than you were yesterday because you know that today and the day after that you will make progress. You will know that you put in the work, that you earned the improvement. You need to push yourself so you feel the satisfaction that you've made further and further past your original routine, further and further past your failure. There is nothing else you can do but work, to work harder, and harder. The struggle is the only way you know you're going to succeed. Take this new opportunity and make this change in your life. You will be better. Take this risk. Take this opening. This is the time to make your life a better place, to make your future a place where you can see yourself achieving, a future where your life is somewhere where you can create your own empire. Know that not all of your successes has to be exposed or flaunted. Be humble. That's even more important than the progress you've made. Use your success for you and only you. Use your success to boost your life into the next level. Use your success to make you grow into a more courageous and stronger person. You are you for one reason, to be yourself to use the potential you have as a person and make this your future. Use this as your first step into success. Change the way you view life. Switch your perspective of success and use it in the right place. 
confident to stand up and take responsibility for your mistakes and courageous enough to make mistakes in the first place. Educate yourself. Be this person. Become the person you've always wanted to be. You need to make this transition for your future to make your life better and bigger. You will be who you need to be. Motivate yourself with that vision. The vision of your future. The future of a successful life. What's the favorite lesson you've ever learned? What is your biggest achievement you've ever accomplished? And then what is your greatest success? I want you to think about it. Think about how you got there where you needed to be in order to get there, in order for you to make that kind of progress. What challenges did you have to pass? What limits did you have to crush? What hurdles did you have to overcome? Now I want you to think about that satisfaction that overcame you when you accomplished these things. How did you feel? And how do you need to feel right now? Feel like you have the opportunity to repeat those actions that you once did because let me tell you right now, you do. Make the progress now. Make your progress for the better, for you to make more progress. You have that potential. Now go ahead and spark your success and spark your inspiration. That inspiration, it fuels the progress that you need to make. Use the tools you have. Use your tools because no one can do it like you can, all right? Use this inspiration while you have the opening. Stop living in the past. Start thinking about your future. The future? where you can succeed. That future is actually happening around you right now. So take control of your future now by living in the present, living for now, because that at the end of the day is the only thing that matters. Boost your life, make your life, and live your life. It's this time in history that most people are wasting on the wrong stuff. They're spending it on Netflix or Fortnite or going out with their friends or drinking. And if you want to do that, that's fine. You know, enjoy your fucking mediocre shit life. But like, there's so much more that you can do with, with knowledge and studying. When you make a mistake, it's a part of life. It's part of the journey. You know, you have to appreciate the lows. You have to respect the lows. Celebrate the highs, but respect the lows. Don't block them out. Don't ignore them. In order to be successful, I think this is the biggest thing. You have to be so dedicated to your craft and so passionate about it and so single-minded, focused on that, you know, task. And most people just don't take it that seriously. They're like, yeah, I want to be a millionaire. Yeah, like I meet people and they're like, oh, you're that millionaire. And it, like a smile comes on their face. Like, oh, how do I become a millionaire? But they don't really believe it. They're not asking seriously. They don't, they're not willing to put in the thousands of hours required. Like there's no magic formula. This isn't like get rich quick. And those people who do get rich, like the lotto winners, like they're f up because they didn't earn it. They don't, they don't appreciate it. They don't understand it. I think that going through the ups and the downs is what makes you appreciate everything more. You have to find meaning. And for me, and a lot of people, like, you know, you're on this journey, like, I wanna be successful, I wanna be rich, that's what I want. But what about when you get there? You don't have a plan for that. So now I'm trying to teach, you know, all about charity and giving back and the lessons that I've learned now from being rich for several years. And it's not what you might think. There's a lot of stuff that comes with being rich and you don't realize it. And you know, that's life. Because the world and even school teaches you, teaches us in so many ways to, 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 you know, work on our weaknesses, to get stronger. And uh, I think that's a huge flaw. I think we just get great at what we're good at. We only need to be good at one or two things and we can make an impact on the world. Everybody's in a vehicle, like your, your wealth creation vehicle, whether that's a job you don't like or a job you do like or a business you started or a business that's crushing or a business that's not doing great. You have this vehicle. And when this vehicle's not working, we're looking on the road of all the other shiny cars. And it's like, oh man, I, I tried selling stuff on Amazon, that's not working. I'm gonna go in the car business, the real estate business, I'm gonna go in the speaking business, the, the nutrition business, the supplement. And you're looking for another car to jump in. And I realized people jump from car to car to car their whole life, looking for satiation, looking for satisfaction, looking to make more money. If you can stop jumping from vehicle to vehicle, the vehicle you're in might be the right vehicle, but you don't have the right habits or the right beliefs or the right rules, whatever you want to call it. My book's Habits, so I call them Habits. But it's really the foundation for success so you can 
overcome the obstacles. You don't let negative people in your life steer you in different directions. It doesn't, you know, uh, uh, even people will ask me about productivity. People say, how do, how do you get so much done? How do you run a business and still coach Little League and baseball and stuff? How do you do all those things? It's because of just simple success habits. Like, uh, I, I just wrote something on this recently. I said, you have to treat your decisions for productivity like binary thinking, which is X's and O's, black, and, black or white, yes or no. Is this moving me toward a better version of myself, a wealthier version, a happier version, or is it not? We never give ourselves credit. We'd never treat a friend the way we treat ourselves. It's like, I know I've had days I've gone till 10 o'clock at night and go, man, I got nothing done today. It's the biggest lie. Like we beat ourselves up. We just were, were like these racehorses. We wouldn't even treat a racehorse that we owned as bad as we treat ourselves, right? So I wake up and I'll, I'll do a quick little gratitude and they'll say, what was one win yesterday that I accomplished? And I'm like, wow, you did do that yesterday. And then I'll think of one win I want to do that day. Like what, I'm going to need a million things done today, but what's a must today that would be a great win? I don't think we should drive for money. I think we should drive to be a better version of ourselves. When money was no longer a worry for me, I dove into me. And I had been ignoring and tucking down a lot of crap for a lot of years. And I was surface level. I looked like the guy that had it all going on. My business was doing good, I had amazing children, company thriving, I live in the right neighborhood, drive the right, have the right friends, everything looked great. But it was all masked. And when money got out of the way, I was able to find, dig into me and do my own personal development and my own personal growth and really find the things that I wanted to fix so I could become a better version. There might be something that makes you a lot of money, but it robs your soul. So there's that balance and I think that doesn't happen, oh, that doesn't happen in your 20s and maybe not in your 30s, at least it didn't for me. I was just fighting to be successful in my 20s and 30s. But at this phase, I wish someone would have grabbed me at 25 and said, you're gonna make all the money you want. You'll have all the success you want. Make sure your soul is aligned with that money. Um, and every time, I don't know about you, every time I align my values, my soul, my purpose, whatever it is you wanna call it, with uh, my businesses or my profits, they always soar without having to obsess on the, you know, on the, on the numbers. Great people don't have anything magic. They worked relentlessly for years and years. They decided that they were going to be great. They decided that they didn't want to sit back and hide. They decided that they wanted to shine. They decided that their name would be in lights and people would admire what they do. If not for you, decide to be great for the world. Success never stops. Never stops to breathe, never takes a day off, never looks to take a break. We already have enough problems on this planet. Be different. Be a person who makes a difference. Be a person who makes a change for good. Be a person who has an impact on the world. You need to become someone and you need to become your future. You need to handle your power and feel your potential. You gotta feel this pain to progress, to change, to feel fulfilled, to feel satisfaction. This is where everything can and trust me, it all will fall into place. Stop denying the world of your greatness. You need to see every single day as a bank account. Nobody is poor, nobody is rich, everyone has 24 hours each, and how you spend your balance each day will decide who you become. Now pay attention to every detail. Take every day like it's a brand new spanking opportunity. Take every risk as if it's a stepping stone into the future you're carving out for yourself. Because you have control. You have the control to change and the control to improve. The action and improvement. Spend your time wisely. Do not waste it on things out of your control. If the weather is bad, do not waste time feeling down about it. If it is out of your control, move past it. Look for the things that you can control. It all takes resilience. Resilience to push past any boundary and push through every risk, every hardship, every wrong turn. Right now, right here is an open door. The door that puts you on the path towards success. Losing 24 hours because of a bad 10 minutes is like throwing $10,000 away 
because you dropped a few pennies. You have control. You have control over your future. A future fueled by your success, constructed by your progress. It all begins right here and it all starts right now. Don't waste one more minute sitting and thinking. I want you to spend your next minute acting. Take your own direction and write your own rules. You need to write the next chapter. The next chapter that pushes you through towards a story and a story that you can finally be proud of. Now is the time to become someone you believe in. Someone with purpose. Don't stop now. Don't stop until you know you can make it. Stand up to your success. Stand up to your power. This is your opportunity. Take it. Take it like you own it, because you do. Be sure, know your purpose, your worth, your intention, your drive to strive towards success. Life is in your hands. It has always been in your hands. This is the time. This is the time to make it past your fears, your boundaries. This is the time you break them, shatter them, make them a part of you, build your future from the remains. This is where it starts. Now is the time to succeed. The power is in your hands. The power to be something more, something that has potential. You know that. You've always had it. Take the opportunity, take the risk, take the risk now before it's too late. It's never too late, never stop. This is where you can begin work, hard work. Become the person you admire. You know that you can be the best. All it takes is power, drive, and work. Work until it hurts. This is where you succeed. This is how you succeed. You can be, you can be so much more. Start thinking about what you're actually doing. Like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart, like, you, like th there's, there's things that are gonna be natural and then there's things that you can actually control. I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. I feel like there's a shift that can make people work harder. The big one that I push is you're gonna die. Like, like if you're complain, like to me, life is broken down into complaining and not. So if you're not complaining, well then I have no, I have no advice for you. I'm, I'm pumped. Like you did it. Great people don't have anything magic. They worked relentlessly for years and years. They decided that they were going to be great. They decided that they didn't want to sit back and hide. They decided that they wanted to shine. They decided that their name would be in lights and people would admire what they do. If not for you, decide to be great for the world. I think so many people are keyboard activists, right? Everybody's good at sending a tweet about how the world should be and nobody's doing anything about it and that just that is just very much human nature. But let's not be naive. I mean, people literally complain when somebody gives them the wrong amount of like extra cream in a Starbucks $6 coffee. My lack of interest in complaining is so high uh, and when I watch what people complain about it breaks my heart because they completely lack perspective. And I genuinely believe my happiness and optimism comes from my perspective. I, even in political unrest times like right now, a lot of people are very bent out of shape, but the reality is is that it's just never been better to be a human being. It's, that's just the truth, that's just data, that's, that's reality. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a very fun time to be alive, so much going on. Be prepared in life for a lot of rejection. Because if you're prepared for a lot of rejection and it comes, you don't get turned off, you don't get disappointed, like, well, I'm not gonna do this anymore, no one thinks it's a good idea. It's like, I, I say selling encyclopedias, knock on 100 doors, they slam them in your face. You must be just as enthusiastic on door number 101 as door number one.
We're all worth far more than anyone can imagine. Our power honestly is endless, and our potential has the power to make something real out of the life you live. That's crazy. Like, your life is now. You can alter your future. This is where you begin too, and this is where you start to succeed. Now, this moment around you, right now, that's the secret power that you have. Time is your power. This time, you have the potential to succeed, to be something with purpose, someone with power. There's so many people that are talking sh about how big of an entrepreneur they're gonna be and how much they're gonna achieve and they don't work on weekends. You know, I worked every Saturday of my 20s. Like, and I talk to 20 year old entrepreneurs every single day. Lately, I've been saying to them, this Saturday, you're gonna have more time off than I've had in my entire 20s on a Saturday. So like before you tell me how you're gonna be bigger than me, start thinking about what you're actually doing. We're beating ourselves up. Like everybody sucks at something, right? Like we all have shortcomings and we all have strengths. And for me it's like why don't we just audit that? Like why don't we just look at it that way and be like all right well I'm good at this but I'm not good at that. Like, and then, and, then, and then I only focus what I'm good at, right? Like, I don't dwell that I can't fix shit around the house. I call somebody to fix it. Like, I'm not like, I'm not a man. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, like, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, we all, like, I also think it's awesome that I'm so emotionally stable and I'm the emotional backbone of everybody. Is that what a dude's supposed to do? Like, like these cliches, these stereotypes, they're so silly. Um, you're exactly right, man. I don't judge myself. I'm fully in love with myself but I'm also fully in love with everybody else too, right? It's not like, like it goes both ways. Like I tell people to buy into me, that work for me, it's because I buy into them first. Like I don't need anybody to gain trust with me. I, it's there. Like I believe that the human race is so grossly underrated. We are good. Of course we have some bad, there's seven billion of us. But like when you look at our net score, it's bonkers. Like do you know how much damage we can be doing to each other on an hourly basis and we don't? Like we're still here. Like we won. We're the alpha being and we've figured out how to stay together. This is insane when you think about it. And yet everybody wants to dwell on like somebody said something mean. We already have enough problems on this planet. Be different. Be a person who makes a difference. Be a person who makes a change for good. Be a person who has an impact on the world. Stop denying the world of your greatness. You need to see every single day as a bank account. Nobody is poor, nobody is rich, everyone has 24 hours each, and how you spend your balance each day will decide who you become. Spend your time wisely. Do not waste it on things out of your control. Be prepared for a lot of rejection, whether it's in their personal life that someone says, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too young, you're not gonna do anything other than yes. You've got holes in your nose, you've got things coming out your ears. Whatever is other than yes, this is wonderful. Realize that's gonna happen in life. As soon as people know that, when something goes wrong, they look at a piece of paper, oh yeah, that reminds me. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. No one looked at me and said, like this day and age, they'll, they'll take you in and they'll tell you, but stop picking on this person. Back then, they didn't care. The only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind through pain and suffering. Don't be afraid to step up to your fears. Don't be afraid to even become your fears. Take this opportunity now to be worthy of the success you want, to be the person that you admire, someone who takes extra steps to be more than they could ever imagine, those extra steps, putting in those extra hours. As, as humans, we, we want to find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside. 
So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that says, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives, but we never read that book. So what I would challenge this young man or, or, or young woman to do is you have to look inside of yourself to see what you really want. What, what are you passionate about? We use these words and these little phrases of only the strong survive and all this other crap. They're all just fucking words. Take this as your opportunity to change your life for the better, to enjoy the life you deserve, to have the future you've worked for, the future you know you can have. Use this as a tool, a tool to motivate your life through your success. This is where it all starts. Kick off your life in the direction that pushes you towards a life. A life where you can take control. Make sure you know which direction you're headed in. Organize your world in your favor. Your favor for your purpose, for your future. This is the opening to take you towards a life full of success. You have this control. You have always had this power. Unleash the animal. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow to grow you must suffer and some people will get it some people won't but they have to see what their journey is to start their journey several people live to be a hundred years old they have great lives and they have great kids the kids go to college and all sorts of stuff but somewhere in their life there was a point where they had a decision to make they can go left or right on this path Left was the easy route, right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route, and they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. And I would tell this young person, you gotta start your journey, it may suck. But it will, it will come out the other side when you're coasting. Just keep doing the right thing and the good thing, it'll happen. The reason people change is because of pain. My relationship with pain runs deep and it's complicated. <laughs> On the one hand, uh, I love pain. I love trying to push the outer edges of the envelope of what the pain experience is in a physical sense. Um, and it's also been my greatest teacher in terms of things that I've accomplished, but also my errant ways as well. Pain is truly the only thing that's ever gotten me to change. Uh, so it's been my growth accelerator as well as my reminder of when I've gone astray. Okay, so there's a difference between pain and suffering. There is a difference between that. We're, we're all suffering. We all have suffering. We all have an emptiness or a dark place or corners inside of our spirit and our mind that are not fulfilled and watered and full. Like, we, we all can relate to that. And when I'm talking about pain, I'm not necessarily talking about suffering. But acknowledging our suffering, being in touch with the pain, that's enough to say, I'm when you're really honest, that's enough to say, I can't do this, I don't want to do this anymore. Like this is not the person I want to become and be on a regular basis. If that's the case, if that assumption is right, then as a loved one, my job is to help you get real and experience those places as often as you can so that you make the, the declaration to say, no, 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 that's not okay for me to feel and be this way on a regular basis. You know, we're so conditioned to avoid pain. Every message that we see, every billboard we see, every advertisement that we're exposed to is telling us that happiness can be, can be purchased through comfort, through luxury, through ease. Um, and that's sort of implicit in that is that that's how we find happiness. And I can tell you that I'm happiest and most alive when I'm butting up against the outer edges of my pain threshold and I'm not afraid of it. Uh, and so when I start to feel that sensation, rather than shirk away from it, I realize that's an opportunity to um, experience 
uh, a heightened sense of myself and my environment. To really um, be in a position where everything else falls away and it's just you and your ability to take one step forward, there's a purity to that that, again, is an, another great teacher. And so in terms of techniques, um, I've just learned through experience that just like David Goggins says, when the signals that you're receiving are telling you to stop, that you don't necessarily have to pay attention to that, that, that you are capable of so much more. Uh, if you can develop the acuity, the presence of mind, and the wherewithal to then take that next step, and when you're on the other side of it, to realize you're still okay, and you can take another step, and a whole your, your horizon extends, and you realize that there's a whole world of potential and possibility available to you that you weren't previously aware of. Never should never exist in your world. If you want to improve, if you can see yourself being better, never should even be in the picture. You have the power to do anything possible, the power to transform into somebody capable of anything you can imagine. This, this is the power you deserve. Let your success, let your mindset be the beginning. The journey doesn't end here. This journey doesn't end when the sun goes up, when the sun goes down. It doesn't end when you close your eyes, doesn't end for one second because hard work waits for nobody. Let yourself be heard. Let your power speak for itself. Let your beginning be the potential to take you further and further along your path to success. You are the only inspiration you need. You are the only force it takes to be someone more, to have so much more. Remember your worth as a person. Remember the possibilities of your power, the fruitful future that lingers over your shoulders. This is where you never say never. Never say never to any possibility, to any opportunity, to any mistakes, to any fear. You say yes, this, this is the only way to grow. I think that, that most people set the wrong goals for themselves and it's because they're disconnected from who they are. They are living someone else's life or they're living a life that's so disconnected from who they are, it becomes very difficult to set the right goal. So I think in order to reconcile that, you have to look inward. You know, and that can be different for everybody. That can mean a consistent meditation practice. That can mean therapy. That can mean uh, you know, starting to do yoga. It can mean many, many things. But I think there's no uh, end run around the very difficult long process of really trying to be honest with yourself about who you are, what's important to you, what you care about, and then beginning to breathe life into those things, as frivolous as they may seem, to bring expression to the things that, that you do care about, that, that, that get you excited in the morning. And that doesn't mean you quit your job tomorrow, but the more you can uh, foster something that has personal importance to you, uh, I think that's the first step in trying to uh, move past whatever it is that's holding you back, whether it's professionally or, or personally, uh, to being a more integrated, authentic version of yourself. Let this be the moment you remember. Show yourself as the rocket in your own life. This is the journey you're on. You control the progress you make. You strengthen the path that transforms you into the person you've been waiting to become, the person that allows you to become someone new. You have the skills to be more, the strength to grow faster, the power to be stronger. The journey you've waited for is here, here for you to be something better. This is the opportunity in front of you. This is your future staring at you, face to face, waiting for the power to be granted to you. Your power is welcome, welcomed by your progress, your progress that guides you towards your future. Be someone you can take pride in. Become someone you know that you can become. 
This is the journey you have, the journey you're on. Take the first step towards success. Take the first leap of faith into the risks of your life. Push past the limits. Move toward a future you can imagine, a future you've designed. This is your power. Self-reliance is everything. Don't, uh, don't expect anybody to do anything for you. I'm the only one who can get it done. And if you just buckle down and go the extra mile, you will solve the problem and you will make your way in the world. You know, we all have a unique song. And I think most people, to echo the words of Henry David Thoreau, are, are, are leading lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. And I find that tragic. And so if there's anything that, um, that, that my work is about, it's about helping people become cognizant of that and to take action so that they don't become that person leading a life of quiet desperation, which I think, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't want to say most people, but a lot of people are, and, and I find that heartbreaking. You know, what's your major malfunction right now? What's the thing that keeps you up at night? Who do you resent the most? What are you afraid of? What do you want to achieve? What's in, what's in, what do you think is in your way? You know, I think just by asking people questions and, 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 and then holding a vision for that better life for them, to say, I believe in you. I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to live your life, but I believe in your greatest expression and I'm gonna hold space for you. To give people permission to be honest, to be vulnerable. We're so afraid of being vulnerable. We're terrified of being honest. We're so used to being judged and being held to a standard that society sets for us that we don't give ourselves permission to even ask these questions, let alone answer them. What have you done today to be different? What have you done to step outside the conventions that you set for yourself? The conventions and the rules set by your past. Today, you have the power to move on. Today, you have the power to move away from your past and move towards a successful future. This is your decision, your call to make in your future. This is how your life can gain its own direction. And this is where your life can be so much more, so much better. You can make it better. You have always had the potential to take one more step, the potential to take the risks others are too scared to take because you are more and you are stronger and you have the determination and the courage to be so much more.